there's uh we have a format that enables you to put your theory of change uh in a diagrammatic representation and it looks at one the problem remember we talked um about the product problem of gender-based violence and then it looks at the impact where do you want to go you know when we talk about gender-based violence in the case of Rhoda it's that they want to reduce uh gender-based violence in the community then the question becomes how do you do that and how do you do that is what we call the strategies. And then once you've uh, carried out your actions and your strategies, what direct results do you get from that? You know, um, And then finally, we're going to look at the outcomes. So I want to run us uh, with an actual example on how to develop a theory of change. And even as we move uh, through these examples, I want each and every one of you to try and personalize the examples uh, to your organization. And so the question uh, becomes, what helps you uh, identify the clarity of, of, of your strategies and your outputs and your outcomes and your impacts? It's something we call indicators, which is on the far right uh, corner uh, of, of, of our table. Uh, this is the far right corner of our table. So your indicators, number one, need to be simple, make them doable, make them easy to measure. And so I'll give you an example. Uh, so when we're starting out uh, on our project, you know, you had me mentioning a lot of data. That is uh, data we were able to, a problem analysis that we were able to develop from the national health data here in Kenya. We're also able to identify data from the World Health Organization. And really just a previous organization had carried out a survey uh, around smoking, the challenge of smoking in high school. So we were able to get that data uh, to reach our problem statement. And then um, it's also important, like I mentioned, make sure you have your quantitative indicators. This looks at the numbers. And what that does is it helps you to be able to monitor and it helps you to be able to evaluate and it makes it easy to measure. You know, uh, when we say we are reaching 10 schools, if we haven't gone to 10 schools, it's as simple as that. It's a yes or no indicator. Yes, we were able to reach 10 schools. No, we were probably able to reach six schools because uh, the, project, the project cycle was ending in November and the schools closed early, you know? So you're able to, that helps you to evaluate your progress as you go along. Uh, the students who register for support to quit, we're looking at our target number was a thousand, but then we realized, uh, maybe only 200 come. We are three months to the project, only 200 uh, students have been able to come. We can actually go back to the drawing board and ask what's the challenge? Is it maybe because uh, the counselors we are using, maybe they are old, so they feel they are not relatable. So really uh, having your indicators helps you uh, through the monitoring and evaluation process. But also the most important thing that you need to ensure is you have the internal capacity uh, to measure the progress and the impact and to analyze. So if you don't have some, well, to acknowledge some organizations, you actually have um, monitoring and evaluation officers. So if you know you also have a, a breadth of, of projects ongoing and you have the capacity to engage, that's okay. So make sure whatever level you are at, you're actually able to collect data, you're able to analyze it and use it uh, to, the, to the benefit of, of your organization. If not, it's okay to actually keep it simple in a way that the organizational staff is able to, is able to engage. And so uh, we're looking at process indicators. You can look at, you can use percentages, you can use transition stories. You know, if you're able to get 2,000 testimonials of parents saying, you know, thank you for the training because now my child does not engage in smoking. That's a good thing. And then finally, we're able to have impact indicators. In our case, it's already proven that if you don't smoke, you don't suffer from lung cancer and you're able to live longer. So we already have that scientific proof data uh, to, to show uh, the impact we, we want to achieve. And so I'll just give you a few examples of at Impact Direct as we engage with you, what are some of the, of the indicators that we use. So for our output reports, 
for project participants. We look at one, the number of lives improved. We also look at the indirect uh, beneficiaries. So say it's on economic empowerment of women, you're able to say, now they're able to send their children to school. So that's the indirect beneficiary. Uh, we are also able to look at the observation, the changes that happen in the community since the project um, started. So this can be, you know, due to, through observations, probably again on the economic empowerment of women, you're able to say, you know, um, now they work with dignity because they have their own money, uh, they're able to take their children to school, they're able to um, engage in decision making in the community because now they feel like they have a voice. So these are things you're able to observe. Also, you can use uh, videos or pictures uh, just to be able to, to show, to indicate the change. On the donors, how do we, uh, what are the indicators we use on the donors? Number one, we are able to increase the website visitors. That shows they're able, they're showing an interest in, in the projects uh, with Impact Direct. And then there's increased registration in the newsletter. There's increased registration and following on the social media pages. Uh, there's increased activation. People want to volunteer, people want to donate more. Uh, and also, you know, even those who have been engaging are actually retained and they continue to donate. So this is, enables us to, it's an indicator that we're engaging uh, positively with our donors and we are providing value. And so all what we've talked about, the ideas. So even as you sit down in your organizations, you know, you could have a session where you're saying, okay, what do you think our strategies? You could use stick, sticky notes and, you know, just let everyone share what do they think is the strategy. So you're able to get that, and then you're actually able to narrow down to what the strategies are. Um, what are your outputs, your outcomes, your impact? So this summarizes the discussion that we've had this afternoon. And remember, in our definition of what a theory of change is, we said it's a diagrammatic representation of what you do as an organization. So this has been summarized very simply as this. So in a very simple way, it describes the problem, the strategy, the output, the outcome, the impact. And this is very simple, but it can take different formats. I'll give you an example. This is our, I believe you've all interacted with this. This is our impact direct theory of change. Again, same concept. It starts with the problem. It looks at the strategies. It looks at the outputs, the outcomes, the impact. So you see uh, in the strategies, you're able to see visibility of locally led solutions. We're able to offer access to unrestricted funding, and we're able to support NGOs to build healthy and sustainable organizations. So it builds up on that. And eventually, uh, our impact is we hope to have a thousand lives improved and working with SDG uh, one, two, and four, no poverty, zero hunger and climate and uh, quality education is provided. Again, um, you know, it can be simple, really, it varies. You can have a very simple theory of change, but also dependent on the projects that you carry out. It also can be uh, a bit complex. And this is just to show the idea is to make sure that you've been able to showcase everything that you do as an organization in your diagram of theory of change. So uh, I'll move on uh, very, very quickly. Uh, factors to consider when developing uh, your theory of change. I think I've mentioned this uh, as we continued. It's important to describe the context, know where you're working, you know, uh, what are the laws, what's the government uh, of, of the region like, um, what's the culture like, um, What's the culture like? Just understand the context, the what's the, the organizations working in the region. You can be able to get a lot of data uh, from, from the partners in the region. So it's always important to understand your context. And I think this I gave as a very good example uh, with the project by the Norwegian government that I started with, uh, where they thought uh, probably they needed a, a fishing factory, but really, well, it was a good idea, but they should have understood the concept context of the community better. And then also, you also need to consider uh, the resources that you have, the resources that you have, 
will influence your strategy. So whether it's funding or staffing or equipment or curriculum materials, it's important to make sure that you have adequate resources for, for your strategy. And then also, I think uh, we talked about assumptions. These are conditions that are needed, that need to be available for change to occur. So it's also important to consider those. And uh, so until then, I hope uh, you're all uh, very excited to get started on your theory of change as, as an organization, um, because it's really a tool that will help you to easily understand uh, what you do, really, what you do as an organization. And so in creating a theory of change, uh, this is something we'll be talking about, but it's really simple. It's just following those steps. Get your problem, identify uh, your, your end goal, where you want to go, the impact you'll achieve, and then find out how is it? What are the strategies that you need to get there? What are the strategies you need? What are the strategies you can afford? What is the capacity that you have to engage those, uh, those strategies? And then define your outputs, define your outcomes, and then just make a nice visual representation of what that looks like. How do you know that you've actually made a good theory of change? What makes you know that your theory of change is good? How do you review your theory of change? Number one, make sure it's logical. It's able to very simply tell a story about what you do. Number two, let it be meaningful. Let it describe what it is you do as an organization and let it be able to accurately describe what it is you do. Sometimes you can be uh, talking about what you do as an organization and some of us are not even sure. We're not, okay, yeah, like, well, that's a strategy, but no. So it needs to be very meaningful and to be understood by everyone in the organization and also outside. It needs to be clear, well articulated, easy to understand. Is it something you can be able to pull up and in five minutes describe what you do as an organization? Um, is it something you're able to do? You know, when it comes to implementation, when it comes to your strategies, you're not saying what you hope you can be able to do. It's actually strategies that you implement and you're able to do. Is it realistic? I think that just goes with making sure you create what you're able to do and what your organization has the capacity to, to organize. Is it is it credible? You know, you could be an organization um, talking about influencing policy and, and you do not have access to a policymaker and everyone is like, well, that's a good initiative, but how will we get there? So make sure it's credible. It's actually um, something that yourself as an organization will be able to do and the people outside your organization, uh, be it the donors, um, your partners, or even your project participants actually believe it can be able to happen. And finally, you know, is it testable? Can you test the theory through a series of testable I think, uh, uh, hypotheses? So that, that in, in short is, you know, uh, how you know that you've actually created a good theory of change. And with those processes, you're able to adequately prepare a theory of change for your organization that simply speaks to what you do as an organization. And so as I finish, I want to finish uh, by mentioning I want to finish by saying, even in all this, what we're saying is a theory of change is a statement that explains why we think certain actions will produce desired change in a given context. I hope that has been clearly defined. Thank you.